Welcome back. This is Open Square, a town hall meeting uh, between the federal legislators, that's our lawmakers, and their constituents. Open Square is brought to you by Daria Media with the support of Channels Television, the uh, MacArthur Foundation, and Radio Now 95.3 FM Lagos. My name is Camry Apollo. Now, um, if you are just joining us, this Again, it's Open Square. It's a forum for conversation between members of the National Assembly uh, of the Northeast, that's members of the Northeast National Assembly, and uh, their constituents, the people they represent. Now, uh, we have also uh, remote constituents in Jalingu who are joining us via Zoom. We've taken some submissions from them, quite interesting, I might add. And uh, just a quick reminder once again about the number scroll in the bottom of your screen. You can also participate, join in the discussion by sending in your message and WhatsApp. We have civil society organizations also with us uh, during this discussion. So um, right now we're going to move to another part of our discussion which has to do with engagement because clearly there's a need for more education. This is the reason uh, we have um, functions like Open Square. Let's come back to our legislators now. How often, let me start with Honorable Lauri, how often do you meet with your constituents? How often do you engage with them? And how uh, would you describe the process? Honorable Lauri. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I do engage uh, my constituents, and uh, basically I have a program that I do each year where two people from each unit will come in. Every unit in my constituency. I have three local governments, and I don't just do it at the headquarters. I move to each of the local government. I will sit down there with them. I will give them a scorecard. I will tell them all that I have done in that one year. And every question they have, they ask me, and I give them answer. And whatever they feel should be done, they make their submissions. That I do each year. And I'm inviting all of you. Uh, in May, uh, May, I'm going to have another one. So you're welcome so that you can see for yourself what I do. And if there are other major things that are coming up in the National Assembly, like the Constitutional Amendment, I do meet with some interest group. I will call interest group, we'll sit down with them, I say, this is what is happening. The Give us an example of some of the groups, some of the members of the interest groups. Uh, different associations, all the different associations, whether it is the transport, whether it's the market women, whether it's the Nolge, whether it's the um, uh, uh, nurses, all this, because I believe that these are stakeholders that need to know the traditional ruler, because I have to go and brief him and brief them so that it will trickle down. This is what we have on the plate. What direction do I take in respect of this matter? That I do, and uh, it's on records, and uh, some of you can even view it online that I have done. So that is how to engage. My constituency office is functional. Monday to Saturday, except Sunday, Monday to Saturday, it is open from 8 o'clock until 6 o'clock. Because it's not everybody that can assist me. That's why the constituency office is there. And you can make your presentation in my constituency office, it will reach me. If it happens that you want to talk to me there, they will call me, you don't need to do use your credit. They will tell me, and I will call back, and you make your presentation. Whatever it is, write it and give it there, and whatever correspondence that is there, I go through it, and I give you a response. Because it is part of my responsibility as your representative to have a feedback from you and uh, uh, also to uh, give you response. But believe you me, there is lack of knowledge as to what even people ought to bring. If you go in, 99.9% .9 of the problem you're going to be facing with is just personal problems. Unfortunately, that's what you pass through. And uh, just I will relate with what uh, the other person from Taraba said. I remember, he said, 
There are places, uh, boreholes, they need boreholes, they are drinking with animals. I'm there at the national level, and you're telling me about uh, drinking water, which the chairman of the local government ought to take responsibility. But now it's my own responsibility. So, because as long as we are an elected person, most of our constituencies don't, uh, constituents don't know the difference of what you do. But the most important thing, as a legislator, you ought to create time for your constituency, for them to hear from you, and you also give them feedback of what you are doing. I've been giving my scorecard to my constituents so that uh, we'll be on the same wavelength. Okay, let's come now to uh, Honorable Worker. Do you have a similar arrangement with your constituents? Yeah, similar, but not the same. You see, uh, difference, I've been struck. I mean, definitely uh, need a different approach. So in my own constituency, depending on the nature and the ability after I've conducted a survey, I do have a constituency office, but I disintegrated it. Like, we have three state constituency in my own federal constituency. So I make each of these three state constituencies to be a unit. And I have my age, they are actually heading the three state constituencies that comprise my federal constituency. So things are there, our scorecards are there, the liars, they get complaints, and most of them, I talk to them almost on daily basis, and that is a central chief of staff that when we meet him, even uh, on the road, he will call me and tell me immediate problem. 247, they are all on alert, and personally I'm alert. I use SMS. I don't normally pick calls, because most of the calls are destructive. But SMS, WhatsApp, Messenger, emails, they are my best form of communication. And I program myself, they know it from 10 p.m. to almost till daybreak. I go through my messages and reply them, and then act. So this is one. Then I do come on quarterly basis. Sometimes if I come, I engage some critical stakeholders. Because not everybody understands. Just like he said, when you now call on them, they will bombard you with their personal problem. I'm not saying they shouldn't, but it's not our duty for goodness sake. But because we are very easy to them, when you open the catalog of the problem, more than 80% is personal. Then we do what we can do and leave. But then issues like this, we do same project. Uh, well, I don't know, but when I don't blow my trumpet, nobody blows it for me. When you go to Facebook, they call me Mr. Project in my constituency here in Gombe. That is my for planning. So just to show that, I have tried to fulfill part of the requirement, bringing government clothes. But just like my colleagues say, something that is belong for the local government, we are being bombarded with. Something that is for the state government, we are being bombarded with. That is why in the envelope of the budget, we created what we call ZIP, Zonal Intervention Project, which erroneously people are calling constituency project which I had one of our associates. We'll, uh, we'll come to that on okay. worker. It's part of our discussions because it's one of the issues that many so people need the, to... So to answer the question, yes. this is my mode of engagement. Yes. And then I engage my critical rulers. I call them on phone. I had the problem. If there is anything I ask them to do, and we swift. So I just have a robust arrangement. By my own nature, I don't normally stay 2-3 because in the National Assembly, I am all in international fora doing this. In fact, I have to shift my trip to Kuwait for this meeting. I will have been in Kuwait by now, but I shifted it to tomorrow Sunday, just to allow that. So because of my nature, if I said I will be leaving Abuja always to come, first bombarded by personal issues that will be shedding tears. Okay, now, Honorable Worker, now you've painted your particular situation. How then do you make yourself accessible? Because the people have said you are there to represent us, which means they must have access to you. It's part of your job description. Now, given your other duties, because you have national and even international duties, um, what are you putting in place to accommodate or facilitate the meeting with your people? Because not, you've talked not about what the I phone. Putin. Yes. If you say Putin, it's like in the future. What have what I do been have? doing? That's what I'm saying. I have this segregated, and we have people, like my media aide is even here. Every now and then, he's giving. So people are contacting them. My aide are there, they contact them, 
I engage them. If they tell me their problem, in fact, some of them are to call me about there is a burial, they have to go. So every blessed day I engage with them. And that has been doing right when I was elected. Okay. All right, let's go back to Jalingo now. And uh, let's hear from the constituents there. Now, you've heard the uh, representatives here talk about how they engage with their constituents. Uh, we'd like to hear from you in Jalingu. Do you have a similar experience in engaging with your representatives? Let's hear from the constituents in Jalingu. Please go ahead. Your name, constituency. All right, um, Jalingo, Jalingo, excuse me. Uh, Jalingo, sorry, we're asking the question how do you access your lawmakers? How do you access your lawmakers? This is what we're talking about, not the lawmaking. How do you, do you have access to them? How do you meet your lawmakers? This is a question we're asking. What seems to be the challenge? What seems to be the problem in you meeting your lawmakers? Let me ask the question again. Have you tried to access your lawmakers? If you have tried to access your lawmakers, what I happens? Talk us through, tell us your experience. We have tried to get access to them, and we don't get access to them. Then we can't even reach them. That's the main issue on ground. So we really want to have access to our legislators. Okay, I think let, let's... Be, Okay, now let's be very specific. When you say we try to access them, tell us, did you write? Did you call? Did you go to the office? Is the office open? Is it functional? Is the office locked? Were you turned away? Uh, these are the things we need to know so that uh, we can address them. Okay, so um, let's, let's, let's uh, come back to the uh, audience here. Yes, okay? we have uh, done that. Uh, when they are campaigning, most of the time, they give us their phone numbers to contact them. We communicate with them. But immediately, they go into office. We don't get access through their phone number. You go to their office, constituency office. They will tell you they are not around. Come tomorrow. Even if you drop a letter, that is how the letter will be there for donkey years. No response, nothing. Even if you message them through WhatsApp message or any means, they don't reply. That is how they leave your message there. So we are trying to get access to them, but to no avail. And we are calling on them, our, uh, our members here, to try and create an office that will be meeting with them from time to time, just like their colleague in Gombe said he has been doing. Thank you so much, uh, Emmanuel, I'm presuming. Now, uh, before we go on, please, let's maintain the quorum, okay? We're here to have a conversation so that we understand where our problems lie and that we can uh, resolve them. So please, let's maintain our decorum. Right, um, let's take someone who has not spoken before. You, sir, wearing the blue right in front. Again, we're talking about access to lawmakers, and please let us be specific. Instead of using general terms, I tried, it didn't work, okay? Thank you very much. My name is Brainfty Solomon from Mobi North, Mobi South, Maiha Federal Constituency. Uh, to some of our legislators, they have been doing well. Why to some of our legislators, just like uh, my colleague from Bialingo said, the only time you see them is during campaign time. That is when you see them. But after campaign time, they even go to the extent of relocating from that constituency, you never see them again till another campaign time. Is this your particular experience? And what is your constituency again, uh, Prince Solomon? Mobi North, Mobi North, Mobi South, Maiha constituency. This has been our experience over the time. After campaign promises, you don't see them again. We try assessing them through their peers, it all no avail. Thank you very much. Okay. 
Let's come, uh, you sir, right at the back. Sorry, can you? Bochi uh, Bochi South. Um, by profession, I'm a tech technical person into IT. So um, about the issue of accessibility, uh, I would like to give notes to Honorable who said that he used to have an email segregation of WhatsApp of how, to, how you get access to him. You see, with the coming of technology, uh, lawmakers can make it very easy to communicate with people without going there physically. And from personal experience, like they said, some people, some of the lawmakers, when they meet people, that's why they don't like meeting people, 98% of the time is personal problem. But on the other 1%, there are people like, uh, probably let me say myself, that's what I know, that I will never go to a lawmaker for personal issue. So people that are like that sometimes find it really hard to go there because they will be assumed that they are going there for personal gain also. So what are the, uh, the lawmakers can make it even something through their law that the federal government law said that they must engage with their people through social means. For example, this open square is conducted by a private firm which costs money to do it. If they can, there should be a way whereby these lawmakers can meet citizens at a very cheap or very low cost where private companies don't have to get involved. That's on my own uh, observation. Okay, thank you. Um, there's a lady here. Yeah. Think, please. Gender. I buy name for those. I buy name for those that are from Yola North, Yola South, Gire. Um, sometimes we find it difficult to meet with our elders. Some of them, they will just change their numbers. They are not visiting their constituency. That's the major problems that we are facing. That's why. OK, thank you. I think let's take one more. OK, there's another lady there. No, I was going to call another lady on the other side, but we have one here. Please, madam, please. My name is Abubakar, government up. Uh, well, I would say my constituent is actually Gombe State and uh, the whole of Northeast, so I can talk about any part. Um, our representative actually talked about uh, Yamal Tudeba, about um, recent engagement actually shows that there is a disconnect between the federal legislatures and the constituents. Recently, I've had a lot of engagement with uh, the communities and there's that problem. Um, they are not sure of whether pro uh, projects are from the, the constituency projects, the government, the federal government, personal people, you know, individuals. Nobody knows where the, the constituency project is coming from. And in fact, even when the constituency projects have been carried out, the people are not uh, taken along. Their needs are not put into consideration. The lawmakers just decide on whatever projects they want and they, they push it down to the people. So sometimes there's that lack of ownership. People don't feel a part of the project. And because of that, you know, the projects sometimes are irrelevant and um, not a priority of the people. So that is one. Um, okay, we'll take one very quick one so we can move along. All right. Go ahead, very quickly. Um, a quick one, I will say that um, instead of um, just having the constituency project, sometimes they come. They come along, but they come with jamboree and uh, a lot of funfair. So it's nothing serious that they are actually carrying out. They, are just, they just come and people see you around and, you know, the crowd and whatever. And no serious uh, information is being gathered. So that is also a, a major challenge. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like us to go back to Jalingo. And in Jalingo, we'd like to hear from somebody who has not um, had their thoughts yet. We've only had two people from Jalingo. Please, could somebody else from Jalingo give us their own uh, thoughts? Accessing your lawmaker. Is it easy for you to access your lawmakers? Do you access your lawmakers? I'd like to hear from somebody who has not yet talked in Jalingo. And please speak directly into the mic, your name, constituency, and be very clear. Please go ahead. Good afternoon. My name is Safiano Abubakar Bauro. 
from Jalim Goyero and Zim Federal constituency. From the beginning, they used to pick our call, especially my member House of Representatives. We used to call, chat with him, and there are some basic advice that we used to give him, and he's accepting it, even though he had opened and constituency office near opposite to government house, but later on, the constituency is not working. But when issues come to petition or writing some requests, we used to send it to his senior legislative assistant. But later on, all these channels were not available. When we try to reach him through phone, we are not getting him. Even the legislative aid that we used to communicate as of then, we are not getting it at the right point. But there is one request that we have made. He has tried that one. When we issue a request on one feeder road around Bardray Way, and he accepted the, that petition and request, he makes sure that the project has done and he has commissioned the project. We that applaud that one. But in Jalingo Metropolis and other constituencies, especially Euro and Zim, there is a lot, especially Euro, there is a lot, even in his, in his own town, there is a lot of areas they need to rot, that we just rot. So we are appealing. We are appealing because sometimes we used to get this kind of ways that we can communicate with them through this kind of channels. So when, if he is hearing us or he is watching, please, we are appealing. Those three local government that you are representing, please, those feeder souls that we have petitioned for you to make sure that they have gotten consideration, please, we are requesting for you to make sure the work is done. Especially, especially that Numan Jalingo Road. Because in that area, that Numan Jalingo Road if you follow that, it will take you to, even in your own local government. These places need very serious attention. And if you can remember, the honorable member representing Gombe says a lot of works that have been channeled to one zone. So you guys have to sit down, you that you are representing us in the federal law, especially those that represent us in Northeast. You have to sit down and make sure that those projects we have been, which have been approved, make sure that the project has been completed. The, the remaining money that the executive that didn't okay. give you guys, give factors, make right. sure that this Okay, Jalingo, thank you. A lot of people have suffered. All right. A lot of people have suffered. Thank you, Jalingo. Let's uh, take some messages on our WhatsApp now. Uh, Idris Ilu from Taraba State's Bali local government area on WhatsApp writes, most of our representatives, especially in my zone, which is central zone, they're very hard to access until election time. And uh, Mohammed Ribadu Jibrin from Bochi says, the issue of Northeast Commission uh, is a very good achievement made by our legislators, but the commission is only in two states of the zone uh, that's Borno and Yobe. There's no equal distribution from the commission. For example, my state, Bochi, my observation, this is my observation to our lawmakers. Again, that's uh, Mohamed Ribadu Jibrin. And uh, Husseini Abdraman uh, Ngombe from Abuja says, I listened to the analysis of Honorable Yunusa Awakar on the upgrades of Federal College of Education, Technical Gombe, and that Federal Horticulture Gombe. I agree with you, sir. But will it not be more appropriate if we can upgrade Gombe State University of Science and Technology Gombe to Federal <laughs> University of Science and Technology Education and Agriculture Gombe? That is to say, Federal College of Education Gombe and that of horticulture should remain as they are. That's my opinion. Uh, that's from uh, Husseini Abdurrahman Ben Gombe. Okay, so. Um, Again, we've been talking about the accessibility of uh, lawmakers by their constituents. And uh, it's always been a uh, uh, you know, very, very uh, contentious issue. Again, we've heard some constituents say, after elections, we don't see them. Now, the uh, issue of education on who does what, I think is a very, very important one. Uh, who is to educate the people 
on the functions of the legislature. Whose job is it? Is it the legislator to tell the people this is our job? Is it the people to teach themselves what the legislator's job is? What is it? All right, we'll go on a break. And um, when we come back, we'll be talking more about, uh, uh, for example, lawmaking and how it impacts the constituents. And uh, another question is, how do the constituents, engaging with the constituents, how much of that influences the way our lawmakers vote? Uh, we've heard from two lawmakers who interface with their constituents. How much of their constituents' uh, uh, wishes are reflected in voting? Should it be reflected in all? Is it uh, uh, you know, just some votes? We'll hear about all of this when we come back. <laughs> 